Today we will be solving these two Coulomb's Law problems, but before that, let us understand Coulomb's Law properly. In electrostatics, the force between two charges follows the same idea as the gravitational force. If charge Q1 is at one position and charge Q2 is at another, then the force on charge Q2 due to charge Q1 is written as F2,1 and the force on Q1 due to Q2 is written as F1,2. The magnitude of this force is F is equal to K multiplied by Q1 multiplied by Q2 divided by R squared, where R is the distance between the two charges and K is a constant value, which is this. This is similar to the magnitude of the gravitational force, which is F is equal to G multiplied by M1 multiplied by M2 divided by R squared where G is a constant number, M1 and M2 are the masses of the objects, and R is the distance between them. Now gravity only knows how to pull since it is an attractive force only. But Coulomb's law can do both, pull or push, depending on the type of charge. The best way to know about the directions of these forces is, you just assume them to be repulsive, like F2, comma. one will be like this, and F1, 2 will be like this. Then you substitute the value of charges with their respective sign, like positive or negative, in the formula of the force. If the final answer for the force comes out to be positive, it means your assumed directions were correct, and the force is indeed repulsive. But if the force comes out to be negative, it means the actual direction is opposite to what you assumed, and the force is attractive. With this setup, let us now solve problems related to Coulomb's law. In our first problem, we have two positive charges Q1 of charge 3 microcoulomb and charge Q3 with 5 microcoulomb, and distance between them is 1 meter. Also assume that I have somehow fixed these charges in space, so they cannot move. Now, I want to place a third charge Q2 which is minus 4 microcoulomb, somewhere on this line where Q1 and Q3 are placed such that no net force acts on it, meaning the forces due to Q1 and Q3 on Q2 exactly cancel each other out. Your task is to find the exact position where this charge Q2 should be placed so that it remains in perfect balance. Okay to do so, let us assume that Q2 is placed somewhere between Q1 and Q3, at a distance x meters from Q1. That means the distance between Q2 and Q3 will be 1 minus x meters, since the total distance between Q1 and Q3 is 1 meter. Now we apply Coulomb's law. Since Q1 and Q2 have opposite charges, they attract, and F2,1 will be directed towards Q1, that is, to the left. Similarly, Q3 and Q2 also have opposite charges, so F2,3 will be directed towards Q3, that is, to the right. For Q2 to be in balance, these two forces must be equal in magnitude and must cancel out each other. This is Coulomb's law, so we write the magnitude of F2,1 as K multiplied by Q1, multiplied by Q2, divided by X squared. But note that we will now only use the absolute value of Q1 and Q2, not their signs like positive or negative, because we now know the direction of the force. Then we write the magnitude of F2,3 as K, multiplied by Q3, multiplied by Q2, divided by 1 minus X whole squared. As both these forces are equal, so equate them. We can cancel K and Q2 from both sides, as they are common. Then substitute Q1 and Q3. This leaves us with 3 divided by X squared is equal to 5 divided by 1 minus X whole squared. We now cross multiply and get 3 multiplied by 1 minus X squared is equal to 5X squared. Expanding this gives 3 minus 6 x plus 3x squared equals 5x squared. 
Bringing all terms to one side, we get 2x squared plus 6x minus 3 equals 0. I will not bore you by solving a quadratic equation. We get two values of x. One is approximately 0.44 meters, and the other is approximately minus 3.44 meters. So the charge Q2 can be placed approximately 0.44 meters from Q1 to experience no net force. Next, we place these three same charges in this configuration where Q1 is placed at origin. Q2 is placed on the x-axis, 2 meters to the right of Q1, and Q3 is placed on the y-axis, 4 meters above Q1. Our job is to find the magnitude of the net force acting on Q2 due to both Q1 and Q3 at this exact moment in this configuration. We begin by calculating the force on Q2 due to Q1, which we write as F2,1. Since Q1 is positive and Q2 is negative, they attract. So F2,1 will point to the left from Q2 towards Q1 along the negative x axis. Using Coulomb's law, the force is K multiplied by modulus, or the absolute value of Q1 multiplied by the modulus of Q2 divided by 2 squared. Substituting the values, we get 0.027 newtons. So, the magnitude of F2,1 is this, and its direction is purely along the negative x-axis. Next, we calculate the force on Q2 due to Q3, written as F2,3. So we need to first calculate the straight line distance square between these two points using the Pythagoras theorem. That gives us 2 squared plus 4 squared, which is 20. Now, since Q2 is negative and Q3 is positive, they attract. So the force F2,3 will point from Q2 towards Q3, that is, diagonally upward and to the left. We now find the magnitude of this force using Coulomb's law again. So F2,3 is equal to this. Solving this, we get the force as 0.009 newton. Now, since this force is diagonal, we need to break it into x and y components. To do that, we look at the triangle formed by the positions of Q2 and Q3. Let this be the angle theta. The cause of the angle theta is 2 divided by the square root of 20, and the sine theta is 4 divided by the square root of 20. Therefore, the x component of the force is F, 2 comma 3 multiplied by 2 divided by square root of 20, and the y component is F. 2 comma 3 multiplied by 4 divided by square root of 20. Calculating this, the x component becomes approximately 0.004 newtons towards the left, and the y component becomes approximately 0.008 newtons upward. Now we combine both forces. From F2 comma 1, we have this along the negative x axis. And from F2,3, we get an additional force of this to the left and this upward. So the total X component of the net force is this plus this, which is approximately 0.031 newton to the left. The total Y component is 0.008 newton upward. Finally, we calculate the magnitude of the net force on Q2 using the Pythagoras theorem again. That is the square root of this squared plus this squared, which gives us approximately 0.032 newton, and we are done. Now, the other thing you may want to do is to find the angle, say alpha, which this net force makes with the x-axis. Again, using trigonometry, we get tan of angle alpha as the y component of this net force over the x component of this net force. So alpha equals tan inverse 0.26, or nearly 14.5 degrees. Noise. Now it's your turn to solve this problem. Suppose charge Q3 becomes negative, or minus 5 microcoulomb instead of positive. 
So tell me the magnitude and direction of the net force acting on Q2 due to both Q1 and Q3 at this exact moment in this configuration. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So, goo!